Before we get started diving into this, I want you to just for a moment, wherever your allegiance might be, I'd like you to kind of just take put that down for a moment, just for the next few minutes. Listen to this conversation with this this, this monologue with me without any uh, agenda or preconceived ideas of who is in the right, who is in the wrong. Because if you look at Hamas and the Palestinians, they feel completely justified and willing to die for their cause of reclaiming Palestine for themselves. And they feel that they've been wronged um, and they have been for years, right? So they're willing to die for their cause and they feel completely justified in it. On the other side, you have Israel and the uh, population, the Israelis who feel completely justified in, in their side and what they're doing um, and they're killing and um, they're willing to die for, for, for their side of things. So we have two people who are feeling the exact same passion um, behind their intentions. And so neither of these sides are going to back down. They're both pure in their intentions. Whether you want to believe it or not, both sides believe very strongly that they are correct and that they are in the, the moral right. So I'd like us to, for a moment, consider that maybe there is not a right and a wrong side here and that both are justified in their own way. Um, not to say that the terrible things that are happening are good, by no means is that true. But I'd like to take a more absolute perspective. I'd like to, you know, take us off the ground. Let's look from uh, miles, miles above. Can we look down and kind of detach ourselves from the situation? And one of the things I want to bring into this conversation is the Bhagavad Gita. And the Bhagavad Gita is a story of uh, a man named Arjuna in ancient times who was faced with a war. He was a prince who had an empire who was on the battlefield getting ready for war. And he was so conflicted as to if he should fight or not. Because the empire who he was fighting against, who he, who he was going to fight against, had people uh, in his family living uh, in that empire and they were going to fight each other and kill each other and everybody on all sides were going to die and it was going to be terrible. And so he felt conflicted um, and he didn't want to see anyone that he loved die on either side. And I think that can be related here. We have the two sides and there's lots of sorrow and people have relations with each side. So Arjuna has a conversation with Krishna who is uh, the incarnated form of the divine. Basically, God came into flesh and came to talk to Arjuna. And the conversation consisted of Krishna telling Arjuna that it doesn't really matter. What you feel called to do is what you feel called to do in the human realm. And it, if you die, if people you love die, it's the, de the death of the body is just an illusion that your soul continues on. The, the substance, the real you is not your body. It is not the human form. So Arjuna, with this information, decides to fight because that is part of his dharma. That's part of his path and his karma, the actions that he um, is, is supposed to do. And it doesn't matter if he dies or not, or if people will die. That's not to say that the, the violence isn't real, that the pain and the suffering isn't real. But it is just saying that in the most absolute sense, things are already planned out in the Dharma, in the, uh, the will of the universe, you know, the path that's already kind of the destiny of events and your purpose it's already set into place and death is um not that big of a deal in the absolute sense so we see people in palestine who feel strongly that th that they are in the right and they need to fight to reclaim what is theirs 
and they feel completely, completely justified. They, they know in their hearts that they are right. And then we have the Israelis who are fighting in the exact same way. They feel like they are fighting for their homeland, for their families, and they're willing to die for this. And they feel justified. And both people are following their dharma purely. They're both following what their path is in life. And many will die on both sides. And there will be a lot of suffering and a lot of violence and a lot of death. But if we kind of look at things from the perspective of the Bhagavad Gita, we can kind of realize that this is nothing new, that war happens all the time. People die. If I was a Palestinian, I would fight for Hamas. I would. If I was an Israeli living in Israel, I would fight in the Israeli army for my family it, because that's how I was born. That's what I felt called to do. See, I am not special looking in as the observer of this conflict. I'm not going to claim a side and say one is right and one is justified because if I was in either situation, I would be, I would have a different Dharma. I would have a different uh, path to fight on either side. So from the absolute sense, we can kind of see things um, are playing out the way things play out. And in the universal sense, it's just the way things go. And it's, Yes, there is suffering because in the human life, there is suffering. There's violence, there's death. But after the human life, that's a different story. Um, so there's kind of more spiritual stuff going on at play here. And it's, it might seem tragic, you know, seeing all this violence, all this torture and barbarism and ruthless killing. But in the absolute sense, it's just, uh, part of everyone's dharma and and the conflict is going to play out the way it plays out and absolutely it's not good or bad it's just what is happening and it will play out how it plays out and that's okay and the people that die aren't you know their soul isn't dead that gets reincarnated uh if you believe in that um particular path so that is just kind of my perspective on this. And of course, you know, I don't mean to offend anybody with the way I'm talking. I, 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 have, I have no agenda here. It's just to kind of bring my perspective, um, detaching myself and viewing the, the, the conflict from an outside perspective, which is a privilege to be talking about this from uh, a nation of peace, of course. You know, and that is my dharma. My dharma here is to talk about this from the absolute perspective that I can see outside of it. Of course, I'm not in it. If I was in it, I would have a completely different perspective. I would be um, fighting for whoever I wanted to fight for. I would be uh, running. I would be hiding, helping, protecting, whatever it is that I needed to do in that situation. But because I am not in that situation, I'm observing it from my perspective. I'm just simply giving my commentary about what's happening. And also at the same time, um, empathizing with the suffering that is happening. Because I think no matter what, uh, the biggest thing that, you know, even though I can't choose a side, I can just say that, you know, the suffering is real and it's going to be experienced um, until death. So that's my perspective. And I think that this is uh, kind of an interesting way to look at it. Maybe it takes some of the suffering away from it when we can detach and realize that it's just kind of part of the flow of uh, the universe and um, human life. So. With that, I am signing out. Thanks for listening, and I hope that gave you a better perspective on what's happening.